I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm fucking certified. I know I don't look like a pimp right now. Welcome to God Mode. My name is Tristan Tate. Now, if you bought this course, you already know who I am, I assume. But who am I to be teaching anyone how to get and retain beautiful women? Well, let me tell you something. Everybody who has ever met me, who has ever visited me, certainly in the last five or six years, has commented on how many beautiful girls I have. So before we get into the course material, let me tell you my credentials. I used to run one of Europe's largest webcam studios. I had 75 women employed by me, working, to, working for me, and following every single order I gave them. But right now, I no longer have my webcam studio. I just have a few models who work for me, but I have a few girlfriends. This is one of them. This is the next. You get the picture. Number three, all of these women are loyal to me and exclusive to me. Number four, five, I have six girlfriends, six. Now I'm not talking about girls I sleep with sometimes. I'm not talking about girls who will come to see me when I'm drunk or when I'm bored. I'm talking six relationships, women who love me, women who want families with me, women who are not going to leave me, women who are loyal to me. I'm not even gonna waste your time by naming how many side chicks I have. Come and hang out with me for a week or so. I don't know if you're in the war room or not, if I know you personally or not, but if you hang out with me, you will see my life is crazy. Now, how do I do it? My, creden my credentials are, are beyond doubt, but there's methodology to my badness. And that's why you bought this course. Let me explain something to you. There's no trick, there's no life hack, there's no being in a position where all the women you meet or come into contact with want to have sex with you. That doesn't exist for any man on the planet besides Brad Pitt and a few others. If you want to be an elite level player, an elite level playboy like me, you have to work at it. This is what I explain to everybody. Why is Floyd Mayweather the best boxer in the world? Why is Roger Federer the best tennis player in the world? Because they train and worked and perfect their skills and that's why they are the best in their field. I am exactly the same. I'm not some guy who women just all want and they chase me and message me on Instagram and want to come over to my house. No, I make a conscious effort every single day. I wake up, I plan, I make my moves like I'm on a chessboard and I keep not only my six relationships going, but I have plenty of time to meet new women. So that brings me into module one in this course. We're going to talk about meeting women and dating. Now guys, what I'm not going to go into in this course is how to dress, how to behave generally. You know the answer to the question. How to dress? I don't know. What's your style? Are you a rugged guy with a lumberjack t-shirt and a big beard? Good, look that way. Are you a black guy with dreadlocks? Good, look that way. I can't tell you how to dress, how to style, style yourself, or how to act and behave. That's all individual to you. So you be yourself and play the game the best way that you can and you know how to. How to behave? Don't be a woman hater. Don't be sour. Don't be bitter. Don't be unpleasant. Don't be rude. These are very basic things and I'm not even going to bother covering these. If you can't get a single girl to talk to you, this is probably the wrong course for you. I'm teaching you how to up your game from a guy with one or two girlfriends to five or six like me and a harem of side chicks. A question I'm asked a lot is how do you meet women? So before we get into the digital side of things, we're going to talk about how to meet women in the real world. Now, the best way to meet women in the real world is not what a lot of people on the internet will tell you. Approaches. Now, the guys who do approaches number their approaches. They count their statistics. Oh, I had sex with 10% of them. I did 100 approaches today. Are you a nerd? Are you a geek? What kind of person are you where you have all day to walk around trying to talk to women on the off chance that one might have sex with you? Approaches my way is completely completely different, you see. I don't march around trying to get women to have sex with me by talking to them. I have built a lifestyle. I have built a life which puts me in contact 
with beautiful women. I'm around them. I'm in, the, I'm in the best clubs. I'm in the best restaurants. I'm in the best bars. I'm in the best spots in the world. I'm flying all over the place. The highest level women in the world are not in your local mall, gentlemen. They're in some bar in Cannes or Monte Carlo. And if you're not there, you're not going to get them. So the key to approaches is to keep your number of approaches very, very low. Aim like a sniper, not a flamethrower. If you see a beautiful girl, you're in a high-end spot, you want to add her to your harem, you want to add her to your collection, even if you're in your local bar. She could be a beautiful barmaid. You make your one approach, you try to get her contact details, and you then work on that lead. Mass approaching every woman who you could talk to is the enemy of an elite playboy like myself because you need the hours of the day. You need your hours in the day to work, to do business, to do other things that are important that add to the lifestyle that attracts beautiful women. You can't afford to waste all your day walking around, walking up to girls, asking for their Facebooks, asking for their Instagrams, asking for their numbers. It's pathetic. You need to make your approaches when it's approaching time. You're out with your friends, you're at a nice restaurant, you see a group of girls, you're out at a nice bar, you see a girl by the bar, she catches your eye. Then you go over and you make your approach. I make no more than two or three approaches a week. If that, and I'm a very social guy, and I get more women than all the people you see on the internet, every single one of them. So meeting women in the real world is very possible and relatively easy. Be confident, I'm not gonna teach you how to approach women because every guy has their own methodology. I'll usually walk up and I'll start with a compliment. I'll open with something as cheesy as you're really pretty or you're beautiful because if she says, oh, thank you, then she's interested. If she looks at you funny, or says, I have a boyfriend, or says anything negative, and you say, okay, no problem. I just wanted to say you're beautiful. Uh, have a nice day, goodbye. And you leave them. Whereas any kind of positive response to the compliment, you have your foot in the door, and you can make your clothes in. You can get the telephone details, the uh, WhatsApp number, which you then later work on. So speaking of WhatsApp, we're gonna go into the online dating game. Now let me tell you, the world has changed. The world has shifted from many years ago when all playboys made their approaches person to person. There was no other way of doing it. The internet didn't exist, Instagram didn't exist, and the best dating app that exists right now is Instagram. Match.com, Tinder, this is where the ugly girls hang out. Girls who can't get a boyfriend, they might download Tinder. A hot girl might download Tinder and mess around with it for five minutes, but dating apps are nowhere near as powerful as Instagram. Everyone who's anyone, every attractive girl in the world is on Instagram. And every guy who's an elite level guy, every guy with some clout, some presence, uh, some money, some talent, some skill, something to offer is on Instagram too. Instagram is the most powerful dating app in the world. Now, if you've ever had a girlfriend, what you should do next time you do is get access to her Instagram inbox. I have Instagram inbox. Um, passwords to all of my girlfriends, all six of them. So I can see the messages they get every single day. 20 or 30 people are messaging them. Hi, babe. Hi, you look good. Now they don't read the messages. This is the problem. And this is why Instagram is important. If you understand Instagram game and you understand how it works, you could be the most handsome guy in the world. You could be a Ferrari driver. You could be in super yachts and all your pictures and private jets. If you have a boring profile picture and 200 people following you, it's not that the girl likes you for the number of followers, it's you are not going to be seen. You're gonna send a message to this beautiful girl, she's gonna scroll down her messages. Oh, who's this? This guy has 20,000 followers. Let me read this guy's messages. She's gonna skip right past you. The importance of building up a nice Instagram page when it comes to game is exceptionally important in today's world. Right now, I'm 40 something thousand followers. I have a verified tick. Now I'm uglier, I'm sure, than lots of guys who are messaging these models and these girls who I do meet on Instagram. However, when I send a message, it can be something as mundane as hello or a love heart reaction to one of her stories. She's scrolling down her page, guy more handsome than me, guy more handsome than me, billionaire, ugly guy, and then there's me. There's a little blue tick next to my name. It says I have 40 something thousand followers. Oh, who's this guy? She'll then click on my page and look at my page. She doesn't look at anyone else. She'll look at my page and think, oh, this guy decided to send me a message. You know what? I'm going to message back or I won't message back. But my messages are getting opened 
And that is the key to Instagram game. You need to have a powerful profile. You know, if you need to post photos of cars, do it. You need to post photos with other girls, do whatever it takes to build up your likes, to build up your online presence, because it's almost as important when meeting women as your real life presence, which we're gonna get into later in this course. So Instagram is the most powerful dating app in the world. I made uh, headlines, national headlines, um, by stealing one of the most famous women in my country, Romania, from her husband. Over a million followers verified on Instagram, this girl. How did I meet her? I sent her an Instagram message. Now she gets thousands of messages every day, but very few from guys of my caliber. Very few from guys with that many followers, a blue check mark. She obviously was curious to see who I am. I made a nationwide scandal by stealing this woman from her husband. So if Instagram, you have to treat it like a job. As I said in the introduction to this, why, are, why is Floyd Mayweather the best boxer in the world? Because he trains. If you want to be one of the best playboys in the world and operate on my level, you have to think daily. You have to make a conscious effort to be more attractive, more out there, more in the face of, of, of the women around you. So every day, if you see a cool scene, you see a cool restaurant, you're in a cool place, get someone to take a picture of you. Yeah, it's narcissistic. I hate pictures. I'm not even photogenic. I'm ugly in pictures. But I take these cool pictures and I put them online because I know it's money in the bank. It's going to grow with interest and it's going to pay off in the long run. So absolutely, you have to apply yourself to your online presence and nothing is more important than Instagram. There is a time and a place for dating apps. Dating apps really do work. I'm filming this on April the 11th, 2020 in the middle of a quarantine, which sucks. However, one country is not quarantined. Stockholm, Sweden. The capital of Sweden was open for business, so I decided to head over to Sweden with my brother and have a bit of fun. Play the Playboy game over in Stockholm, see how it goes. Now, if I had showed up in Stockholm, which was a lot quieter than usual, where would I meet the beautiful girls? I wouldn't really know where to hang out. I wouldn't know where to go or what to do. So I set my Tinder location. Yeah, I pay for Tinder. I pay for the premium Tinder. I set my location to Sweden. I don't bother swiping. I pay for those boost things and I have the Tinder gold to see who swipes me first. I run three or four boosts. Then I take my pick. Again, like with Instagram, my Tinder pictures are me next to my supercars, me by the pool, me looking good, having trained hard. I try to get all the attention I can from the social media and my Tinder pictures are my Instagram pictures. I then look at the best girls that have swiped me. I pick one. Her name was Philippa, absolutely beautiful girl, absolutely beautiful girl. In fact, here's a picture. I'm including a picture of Philippa right now. This is her. Now, Tinder is great for one thing and one thing only, finding the best places in the city to go. Now, years ago, if you were a playboy and you were to land in a new city, you land in Singapore, it's 1988. What you do is you get in a taxi and you tell the taxi driver, hey, brother, you know, where's the coolest spot in town? Where's the, where's the, where's the hot joint? Where's the, where's the cool restaurants, the cool bars, where the pretty girls hang out? And the taxi driver would give you all the information you needed. Maybe a hotel concierge. Today, taxi drivers don't know shit. They're bitter. They're upset. They, the world has changed. The rich poor divide is wider than ever. Taxi drivers aren't going to the expensive places, but you know who knows the best places in every city? beautiful girls. That's what Tinder is for. If you use Tinder trying to get your pee pee sucked, you're doing it wrong. You need to use Tinder to find the best places to go. Match with a really beautiful girl and say, hey, what's the best place to go in Stockholm on a Friday night? Oh, uh, what was the name of the place now? Can't remember the name, but this girl, Philippa, replies to me. Oh, it's here. I say, okay, we're going. I'm going to take you out. Bring your friends, because I was with my friends. I'm going to take you out. Let's have fun. Now, she said yes. And if she had said no, who cares? I now know the best place in town. I know where girls like her hang out. So Stockholm all worked out exceptionally well. I end up sleeping with this girl, Philippa. She's still messaging me now. I've been home for weeks and weeks. That's what Tinder is good for. Finding the best places to hang out in town. And when you get to these places, make sure you check in on Instagram. Take a picture, tag yourself on Instagram, because if you do that, I tagged myself at the Stockholm Grand Hotel, the best hotel in the city. That's where I was staying. I had three or four girls message me simply because I tagged myself at that hotel. Girls from Sweden. They 
all are obsessed with Instagram. Hot girls are obsessed with Instagram. And how did I find out that the Stockholm Grand Hotel was the best place in town to stay? From a chick on Tinder who I never even met. I said, oh yeah, I'm thinking I don't know where to stay. She goes, oh, the best hotel is the Stockholm Grand Hotel. I Googled it, it was, boom, booked it. Then at the end of the night when I was done in that club or whatever with Philippa, oh, where are you staying? The Stockholm Grand Hotel. Of course, it's the best hotel in the city. Like I knew, and I didn't. Oh, wow, yeah, it is the best hotel in the city. You know, I've got a killer mini bar. Let's go and have some drinks. Come on, it's not late. I know everything here closes at three. That's weird. You know, in my, in, in my country, the party goes on until five. True or not, I would have used that line. Let's go. Back to the hotel. That's what dating apps are useful for. If you're there trying to get laid, trying to talk, trying to make your girlfriend and stuff, forget about it, man. Forget about it. These girls get every dude they swipe is a match. After a day or two of talking to them, you're, they're going to stop replying regardless of who you are. If you think she's really hot and you met her on Tinder, get her off Tinder ASAP. Get her onto Instagram, get her onto WhatsApp. Because at least if you get onto Instagram and you send messages back and forth, hey, it's me, you are now out of her other inbox and in her main inbox. You're a guy she knows, a guy she swiped and said she's attracted to, and she will always read your messages. That's a good lead. Forget about Tinder. Terrible, that's its only use. Now, depending on the culture of the country you're in, another way you can meet women is by having a group of women with you. Now, I know this sounds insane, guys. I know this sounds crazy. But if you know two or three girls and you're heading over to a nightclub or a bar and you invite them with you, having a group of women with you in a town or city where these women are from, it acts like a magnet. This is elite level stuff that you will not hear anywhere else. If you have three or four girls from New York with you while you are in New York and you're taking them to the best clubs and the best bars and the best spots, the girls they know congregate around you. They come to talk to their friends. You can make your brief introduction. Hello, my name's Tristan. Oh, really nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm just out uh, with these girls right now. Blah, blah. I tell you what, have you got Instagram? Yeah, no, you come out with us next time. Why, you know, stay here, stay at our table. Screw those guys. Having girls with you acts like a magnet. Now, when I was much younger, if I went out trying to look for women, it was a different world, but I'd go out by myself to crappy bars and clubs and try to talk to girls. You know, I learned things the hard way. However, now I do not go out with just men. I go out with women every single time. I don't care if they're my friends, my girlfriends, girls I'm sleeping with. I bring women when I go out because they're friends, their girlfriends, their mates, they all want to come over and talk. Oh, hi. Oh, you're at Tristan's table. Or maybe they don't even know me. Maybe I can make an introduction. And that is a way that I meet a lot of women. The friends of the women who I fuck, you better believe I've been through a lot of them, especially my side chicks. When it comes to keeping my girlfriends, I don't really fuck their friends that's a bit of a, a line i tend not to cross because i'm spoiled for choice but yeah having women with you attracts women don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't because i know better than anyone else another way to meet women is reputation especially in your home city i don't care you if you live in south africa johannesburg i don't care if you live in mozambique i don't care if you live in uh, sydney la wherever you're from your reputation matters, especially in the city you live, especially in the city you live in. Now, this is when being a gentleman comes in. Kissing and telling, bragging about girls you fuck, showing their nudes to people. It's just not cool. Now, guys who do this, when I meet a guy and he's like, oh, I fucked this girl, I fucked this girl. And it's a bunch of naked titty pictures. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I do all right myself. I don't brag. That's an amateur tactic because what they're doing is they're ruining their reputation. Now, I can meet a girl, and she'll be like, yeah, you actually met my friend before. And I'll say, who's your friend? And it's a girl I used to sleep with for a little while. But I was nice. I was polite. I was kind. I took her to nice places. You know, I, I bought her some nice cocktails. I was always a good host. We had sex a few times. I let her know that it wasn't anything serious. And her friends want a piece of the action. Her friends will hear this and, <laughs> and actually want to date me or want the same kind of setup with me that she had. So reputation is another way to meet women. Don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't work. As I said, these guys on the internet who pretend to be playboys, they don't know what they're talking about. They won't believe in a million years you could meet a woman because you met their friend. Yeah, that's because they're butthurt. They're losers. When a girl breaks up with them, they throw insults at them. 
and cry and scream and threaten to kill themselves because they're nerds. Me, when I break up with a woman, or she breaks up with me, God forbid, especially side chicks. Side chicks leave me because they find out about my girlfriends. I say, you know what? Well, I had a lot of fun with you. You're an awesome girl. I wish you all the best. Yeah, cool. That's the way to do it. Reputation is another way of meeting women. And so is being scouted out, being actively searched out. So when I talk about Instagram game from a man's perspective, actually approaching women and trying to talk to them, I very briefly mentioned tagging myself at the Grand Hotel in Stockholm. Women will seek you out, not just in the real world, but in the online world more so than ever before. Young women who uh, have never lived a life without Instagram or 18, 19, 20, 21. If you take a very good picture, as of this day, I recently uploaded one of me sitting in a hot tub, which is full of money, with a girl in a bikini lighting my cigar while I'm drinking a glass of whiskey. That picture went viral. Thousands and thousands of likes. People who didn't know who I was, people who had never interacted with my profile saw it on their newsfeed because I planned out the good picture and I took it. I had lots of women message me. Haha, ha, I'd never light your cigar for you. But she messaged me. That means she would. You actively get searched out when you're an elite level guy. And this is what I mean one more time when I say you have to train and you have to work at being an elite playboy. That's the key. That way you do get searched out. If you're a normal guy marching around the mall trying to collect phone numbers, no girl in the universe is ever going to say to her friend, hey, that guy who marches around the mall asking every girl's number, yeah, he's hot. Do you know his name? Or no one is going to message you on Instagram. Aren't you that guy who marches around the mall asking girls for her number? Wow, you know what? Why don't you take me on a date? No, you get searched out and you get scouted and hunted when you're a top 1% man. So if you're not being scouted out, if you're not being hunted, if you're not being searched for, what exactly are you missing, guys? Stand up, look down. Can you see your dick? No, then you're too fat. Lose some weight. Women care about looks too. I'm not the best looking guy in the world, sure, but I make an effort. I try. I work out. I get into shape. All these women wouldn't like me as much if I was 20 pounds heavier or 30 pounds heavier. Of course they wouldn't. So... You do get searched out when you're a top level guy, so absolutely invest your time in that. Get a gym membership, obviously make some money, drive a nice car, do something productive. Maybe you play the guitar very well. I don't play the guitar. Maybe you're an amazing surfer. These things get women too. I myself was a kickboxer. It didn't attract as many women as many women as you'd think, but when I was young and I didn't have any money and I couldn't do fun things and I couldn't go to nice bars or nice clubs, the fact that I was a kickboxer got a lot of attention. I could beat another man up. Sure, I was broke, but girls like that. I always had pretty girlfriends. So what are you doing right now? If you're just a normal guy with a normal job doing nothing, you don't produce any content, you're not talented, you can't do gymnastics or, or play the guitar, do something. Because every man in the world has a dick that he wants to get sucked. Every dude on earth, and you're just another one of them. Unless you make yourself different in some way, you will never get scouted out. But it certainly is a way to meet women. Believe me, happens to me all the time. That's how top level guys meet women. So essentially all the same ways most other guys do, but there are little twists and little spins on everything. I'm going to very briefly cover what not to do. Obviously I've gone into day game. Don't do that. You need your time. You need your time to work out. You need your time to make money. You need your hours of your day. You can't go marching around malls or marching around parks trying to go up to every woman who you speak to. Do not send pictures of your dick. If you're watching this, if you're watching this and you send pictures of your dick, what are you doing? Women don't want to see your dick, bro. Don't send random fucking dick pictures to girls. That's obviously a fucking red line. That's uh, More women see my dick than the guys who send their dick to all the women on the internet. And you know why? Because women actually want to have sex with me. Don't send pictures of your dick, guys. That's an obviously uh, a big thing not to do. Do not spam messages. If you message a girl once and she does not reply, do not send her another message. Even if you have her number and you message her once, twice, three times, no reply, give up, quit, delete her number, move on to the next target. Message spamming isn't cool. These are the basic things of what not to do. But that is, in essence, how I meet my women. Now I'm going to go on to dating, because dating is the important part. Dating is how I add women to my collection. The most important part of dating when you are an elite playboy 
is something that you guys probably wouldn't guess if you bought this course. It is time management. When do you go on dates? In the evening. What do you do? Dinner. After dinner? Drinks. After drinks, you try to have sex with her. Maybe she goes home. Maybe she comes back to your place. Wrong. Wrong. You don't do that. How are you going to have six girlfriends and 10 side chicks if you commit an entire evening of dinner and drinks, ignoring your other girls on your phone to try to have sex with a single girl? That is not possible. If that is your method, you're going to have two girls or three girls on the go maximum. That is it. Six girlfriends, I see them all more than once a week. How does that work out? Well, it's not magic. I can't add hours of the day and I can't make time. But time management is the key to dating multiple women, to having a a harem of women. You have to manage your time. So I'm going to give you an example. You need to turn things that you have to do anyway into dates. You can't commit a whole evening to a new girl. So I've met a new girl at a club. I have her phone number. All of my girlfriends want to see me. Let's say I've picked one of them for tonight. I know which girlfriend is coming over to my house and which girl I'm having sex with tonight. I meet my new girl when I do something mundane that I have to do anyway. I'm running errands in the city. I'll say, you know, baby, I'll tell you what, I'll pick you up. We'll go for a little drive. We'll go for coffee. I'll pick her up at 3 or 4 p.m. I'll do my errands, drop the things off that I have to drop off, you know. Have a coffee with the girl for 20 minutes, make her laugh, make her smile, two hours only, then I'll take her home. Now, something different has happened to this girl when she's been with me than she's been with the typical guy. Made her laugh, made her smile, she had a wonderful time, but there was no drinking, there was no getting her drunk, there was no me trying to have sex with her, there was no me leaning in for a kiss. She's back at home at 5 p.m., like, ah, okay, well that was fun. And she's alone in the evening. Who's she thinking about? Me. I can then commit my evening to my girlfriend. I can finish my work around nine o'clock, spend a few hours watching a movie with my girl. Fuck her. I could text on my phone. My girlfriends don't look at my phone. And the girl who I went on a date with was mine all day. She was mine in the afternoon after I left her home. She was mine in the evening. She was mine at night when I said goodnight to her and she went to sleep thinking about me. I didn't try to fuck her but I spent enough time with her to implant myself into her mind. I owned her thoughts for 12 hours by investing a little bit of time in the afternoon and still had my evening free to have sex with my girlfriend to keep her happy. That's how you do dates. That's how you time manage. Fuck this evening, go out for drinks, go out for dinner, try and bang them. Cool, you wanna get a girlfriend, do that. That's, that's all you. But if you wanna play the game on my level, you cannot afford to waste your evenings. You have to manage your time. Now, this was money well spent. I'm going to let you guys in on the most exclusive elite player tactic that exists in the world. I have never seen another man even do it. I've never heard of another man doing it. I've never heard of another man attempting it. And that is having two dates, or three, at the exact same time, in the exact same place. A system my brother and I call double booking. What is double booking? How is this possible? I'm gonna tell you how. Only the elitist of the elite can pull this off. But once again, I can date three or four women in a night, in the same place, have them all thinking about me, go home to one of my girlfriends and spend the next two or three days cleaning up the mess and fucking the girls who I went on the date with. How does one do this? Now, I'm going to tell you, double booking does not work in certain settings. You cannot double book at the cinema. You cannot invite three girls to the cinema, all to meet you in the same place and take them all out for a movie who, when they don't know each other, that doesn't work. Double booking works when there's a vibe when there's a party atmosphere. And you have to understand that in parties and clubs and bars, women will put on their makeup, put on their dress, do their hair, come out and see you. They haven't got any money. They're hanging out at my table, your table, drinking your drinks. They're not gonna storm off and go home because there are some other girls around, especially when you're out with a crew of your friends. Yeah, you know everyone. They're all your friends. It relies 
on a poker face. These girls do not say to each other, oh, hi, I came here for a date with Tristan. So when I go to a club on a Friday, this is an example of double booking. I'll bring one of my girlfriends. Why not? I love my girlfriends. They're wonderful people. Maybe two, but let's, let's say one. One of my girlfriends. And then I'll take three of the women I've been texting who I have yet to meet. I'll, I'll say, you know, baby, I'm going out to the club tonight. I'm hitting this club. You know, why don't you come with me? Bring your friends. Yeah, it's a group vibe. I'm out with some people I know. I repeat that times three. Three women get done up. They shave their legs. They wax their fucking eyebrows. They do their makeup. They do their hair. They paint their fingernails. They put on their lipstick. They put on their high heels and they come to the club to meet me, to impress me. I give each one of them maximum 20 minutes of my time. Oh, hey, baby. Kiss on the cheek. Kiss on the cheek. I'm really glad you could make it. Yeah, you know, have a drink. It's way too loud for anyone to hear any conversation that isn't one-on-one. -on -one. You buy champagne, you keep the party going, everyone's doing shots, everyone's yelling, shouting, celebrating, having a good time. You're all in a big group and the party atmosphere drowns out the room for difficult conversation. These girls then don't say to each other, hi, why are you here? Did you come here to see, which one of the guys? Tristan, yeah, I came here to see Tristan. That doesn't happen. They literally introduce themselves to each other. Hi, my name's Andrea. Oh, hi, my name's Christine. Hi. They kiss each other on the cheek. Hey girls, would you like some champagne? I hand them both a glass and the party continues. I call it double booking. Now you'll see these guys on the internet, playboys, um, so-called, who have tables full of girls. These girls are either not interested in them, not fucking them, or they're escorts, prostitutes, girls who are being paid, girls who are being hired to uh, hang out. That's not how I do it at all. I don't think elite level playboys ever play that game. So I have women all coming for a date with me. They've all bought one or two friends. My friends talk to their friends in a huge mixed group. And if I want one at the end of the night, if one's made it clear she wants to stay with me, I could sneak off with her, leave 20 minutes before my friends. My friends will give me covering fire. If not, then I'll go home with one of my girlfriends. I'll go home to one of my girlfriends. I'll go home to two of my girlfriends. But all of these women, as far as they're concerned, I went to the club and I took them with me. They were my date for that evening. The evening when all the champagne comes over, everyone's looking at the party that's being had. They were my date. So yeah, double booking, elite playboy tactic. Nobody I know does this. Only me and my brother. And we have a good saying, the only thing better than double booking is triple booking, which sounds stupid, but now you understand how the tactic works. The more there are, the less room there is for any difficult conversation to happen or any mistakes to be made. You couldn't pull this off at the cinema. You couldn't pull this off at the restaurant. But next time you're going to a club and taking a date, invite more girls. Double book yourself. Try it out. And then message me on Instagram and tell me, Tristan, thank you, because it fucking works. So you know when I go to clubs and when I go to bars, I'm usually double booked or triple booked. My table has lots of women on it. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about club game, how I run game inside of the club. Now, of course I'm spending some money. I have some bottles of vodka, some bottles of champagne, depending on what your budget is. As long as you have enough alcohol to get everyone at the table drunk and partying, that's enough. You don't need to be a millionaire to pull off these, this double booking technique. Any club, any bar or restaurant that has a party atmosphere, you could do it at. But when I'm there, as I said, if you want to be elite, you have to make the effort. I can't go out there with three or four women and a girlfriend and think, you know what? Wow, this is wonderful. I can have any of these girls I choose. This is great. That's enough. It's never enough. So when you're in that position, the winning position, you're the man in the club with the women. How do you capitalize on it to meet more women? This is when you do your approaches, gentlemen. You're the guy. You're dressed nicely. You're looking your best. You're surrounded by women, you're on the table, you're drinking your champagne. If you think that other women in the, in the club don't notice this, you are wrong. You need to expand your horizons. You don't just look at your table and what you have there. Look further, look deeper into the crowd. Look at the bar. Who are the two girls standing on the bar? They're looking at you. Of course they are, you're the guy with all the girls in the club. Now, they're looking at you who in their right mind, if they were with their girlfriends and on dates, would walk over and approach the two girls at the bar? Surely nobody. That's why you do it. 
you walk over to the girls and say, hey girls, hey, I saw you looking, you look familiar. Have I met you before? Oh no, maybe you just have one of those faces. No, I'll tell you what, no, me and my friends are all having a drink. Don't stand over here by the bar, it's lame, all these dorks trying to talk to you. Come over with me. Come have a drink with me. Uh, let's go. Maybe it's a yes, maybe it's a no. But you have to make your approaches. It doesn't matter what crowd you're in. They may say yes. They come over. They'll introduce themselves to the other girls. They won't say, oh, are you on a date with Tristan? Are you not? They are blinded by how fun the party situation is. And you've added two more to your triple booked girlfriend date situation. That is club game. Also, as I said, if you're out with women from a certain city, their friends come over. When they come over, they're like magnets. The more of them congregate in one area, the more flow in. Make your approaches then. Talk to their friends. Introduce yourself. Tell them your name, if nothing else. Oh, hey, no, hi, my name is Tristan. Really nice to meet you. Would you like a drink? Cool, have whatever you like. Bye. You'd be surprised. You do that with every single girl. A few times a year, you're going to get an Instagram follow the very next day. Oh, hi, it's, it's Cynthia. No, oh, hi, Tristan. Yeah, we, we met in the club. It's that simple. You need to run game on top of game. There's no universe where you try to get 10 women and you get all 10. To get as many women as me, you have to try with hundreds. You have to make yourself available and out there for hundreds of women to know and hundreds of women to see. So when you're in the club, you can get into the minds of 50. You can have 15 or 20 women thinking about you and you can get six or seven of their details on top of your own situation, which you're already running. That is why nerds who do day game are never elite level playboys. I do not approach women all day long. I've built a beautiful life and put myself in a wonderful situation where my situation attracts the women. They, are, they come to me for me then to attack. I'm a trapper. I'm not a hunter. That's the way to do it. And that's why I have so many women. But yeah, club game. Don't just look at what's on your table. Maybe, maybe your girlfriend will break up with you tomorrow and none of those four girls will want to fuck. Maybe they just wanted to drink some champagne. Maybe they don't like it in the... Maybe they don't like you. They just wanted to hang out at the club. Cool, what are you going to do then? Go home and jerk off? No. No, you're going to talk. You're going to get one of the girls who went and approached the bar. Always overstretch and always be thinking on how to capitalize your situation and add more women to the harem. That's the end of module one, how to meet women. If you apply all these things the way that I've taught you, you should meet women and be ready for the next stage, which is dating, module two. Nobody covers this topic, nobody. But I'm gonna talk to you about how to have sex with virgins. Virgins. Now, elite level playboys, these dorks who take these pictures with all these girls, they are usually paid, they're models, they're actresses, they're, they're sent there by their agency. I do not pay for sex. I've never hired a prostitute in my life and I won't, I don't need to. But when you don't pay for sex, there are advantages to that. You get the women no one else gets. Any sheikh in Dubai can hire a, the hottest Dubai escort and bang her. I could go to Dubai and bang the exact same escort. Why would I want to? That's disgusting. However, in my situation, you get access to girls that no one else has access to. When you run game like me and meet the women who I meet and roll in the circles I meet, you meet beautiful virgins sometimes. Me. I'll do two or three virgins a year. Now, how do you date a virgin when you're, a, when you're an ice cold player? There is a tactic which I'm going to share with you on how to date a virgin and how to take a girl's virginity. Typically, the first girl's virginity I took, I was 16 years old. She was a virgin, I was a virgin. It was rubbish. And what I did was this, I dated her. She was my girlfriend for three months. Then we had very boring sex. That's how I had sex with my first virgin. Now, the recipe hasn't changed, but the tactics and the implementation has certainly changed. Be their boyfriend for three months and be in a nice relationship with them. That is the recipe. I'm sorry, guys. You want to run into a virgin and fuck her the next day? Don't ask me how. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. I don't even think it's possible. You have to be their boyfriend for an extended period of time. You then have to take a virginity on the second month anniversary or something along those lines. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. 
while still being in a playboy lifestyle scenario. What you do with your virgin is you turn everything into a date. I need to go have a business lunch with my brother or my friends. I make sure she's there. I Uber her in, I Uber her out. If I have to go for a drive, I make sure she's with me. I go and pick her up, do my drive, drop her off, go back home. If I have to go to a, a club, she's part of my double booking scenario. She's always with me at least three or four times a week, regardless of what I'm doing. I go to a lot of lunches and a lot of dinners. I eat at restaurants a lot. I take her to the restaurant. Nothing about my life has changed. I'm not going out of my way. I'm not making specific time for her. I'm not trying my best to take her on dates and show her a good time. What I'm doing is I'm adding her into my normal everyday life. Now, to me, I'm fucking my girls. I have my girlfriends, my relationships. I'm getting my sex. I'm having my drinks, hanging out with my friends. Nothing has changed in my life apart from there's some quiet girl next to me half the time when I'm out and I would otherwise be alone. But to her, in her mindset, Tristan is my boyfriend. He took me to lunch today and he dropped me home. He took me to the bar today. He was with his friends and he took me with him and then he sent me home. Tristan is my boyfriend. In her mind, we've been dating and then one day that day will come when she's ready and you'll know. You'll know because she'll make it obvious to you. No matter what you do with virgins, don't get pushy. Don't take them to your bed and try and sleep with them and get your dick card. And no matter what, do not violate my golden rule with virgins. If she won't fuck you, do not let her touch you. Oh, you're a virgin, maybe you can suck my dick. No, 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 it's desperate. Uh, maybe you can wank me off. It's, it smells of desperation. Do not do this. Baby, you're not ready? I understand. Let's go to sleep. Go to sleep like a fucking man without sex for one day if she stays with you. For fuck's sake, have some dignity while well, some virgin giving you the worst blowjob in the world trying to explain her how to... Guys, grow the fuck up. If you're with a virgin in bed, she's not ready, cool, go to sleep. Nothing will make her want you more than this. So I've come into situations where I've been seeing these virgins for a month, two months, nothing about my life has changed. And then they'll come to me and say, oh, maybe we can do something special this weekend. Boom, I book a hotel, we have a few drinks at the hotel bar, take her upstairs, virginity gone. As far as she's concerned, I've been her boyfriend for three months. She's in a long-term committed relationship. And all it's taken is me to order some Ubers when I'm having my free time with my friends. That is how I have added virgins to my list. Two of the girls of my six were virgins when I met them. They're not anymore, but now they're mine. Now, when it comes to dating, I know what some of you think. Women love money. No. Whores love money. Women love fun and fun costs money. If you're broke, you're not gonna get as many women. Why? You don't pay the women. I don't give women money. Women very rarely see my money and think, ooh, maybe I can get some money from him. Only if they're real bitches or real whores or prostitutes. Good girls don't care if you have money. They're not gonna ask you for money. But if you don't have any money, all you can do is invite them to your apartment. Money is important because money facilitates fun. You could take a girl out in your nice car. That's fun for her. You want to take her out. In my house, I have a jacuzzi. That's nice. I have a fully stocked bar in my cigar lounge in my house. They can come here. They can have some drinks. Money facilitates fun. So when it comes to dating, yes, you need money. Now, there's an old fallacy when they say, oh, well, you pay for it one way or the other. You're paying for it if you hire a hooker. You're paying for it if you go to the club. No. One... Going to clubs, bars, and restaurants is much more expensive than paying a hooker. One, it costs more. Two, it costs more because it's better. It's better. You can't pay for the sex that I have. You can't buy the sex that I have. Do not hire escorts and do not hire prostitutes. If a woman comes to bed with me, she has a genuine desire for me. I may have bought champagne. I may have bought dinner. I may have bought movie tickets. It doesn't matter. She comes into my bed with me thinking, wow, I want this man. I'm going to fuck with this guy. I'm gonna let this guy inside of me. I'm crazy about him. He seduced me. I wanna have sex with him. Any situation where you are paying for sex eliminates that spark. And that spark is what makes male-female interaction beautiful. I love having women around me, but I would hate 
women sitting around me, charging me by the hour, looking at their watches. Oop, that's another $300, that's another $200, that's another $100. I would detest them. Who the fuck do you think you are sitting around me, charging me by the hour to be in my company? No. So yes, it is more expensive. You do pay one way or the other, if you date them or if you pay them, but paying for them, you don't get them. You're giving her money, she thinks, ah, okay. I better go fuck this loser. I better go fuck this guy because he gave me some money. That's very different to a woman thinking, I want to be in bed with this man. Elite playboys do not pay for sex because anybody could teach that. Ready? I'm gonna give you the playboy pay for sex course. Make lots of money, hire hookers, have sex with them, done. Anyone with money can do that. But as I said, with the virgins, with the good girls, with the girls looking for long-term relationships, if you're smart enough and your tactics are solid, you can play the game and you get access to women that the guys who pay simply can never touch. Another important aspect of dating your women is when you have your guy time. When you're an elite level playboy like me and you have all the women that I do, you need to maximize your hours in your day. But what you can't do is you can't eat into guy time by replacing it to date women. Your guy time is when you hang around with your friends. Maybe you drink beers, I drink whiskey. Maybe you, I don't know, smoke your cigarettes, I smoke cigars. Regardless of what you do in your guy time, you need it. Men need to be around other men. You can't just be around women exclusively. So a very good test to whether women are relationship quality or friend quality is how are they around your friends? Now, my women are all the same. All six of my girlfriends are the ones who pass my test and they get to be around me when I have my guy time. Now, when they're around me, what do they do? They make sure the ice stays cold. They bring the beers over. They make us coffee. They make us tea. And they remain quiet. Your guy time is important date time, especially when you're hanging around with virgins or girls you need to put a lot of hours in with. You can happily invite them around, introduce them to your friends and make sure they sit there and stay silent. Do not eat into your guy time and replace it with women time, but you can absolutely use that when dating as well. Basic things you shouldn't do when dating. Now we're wrapping up dating. I'm gonna tell you one not to do. I already covered, do not waste evenings. Do not commit mass amounts of time to a single female. You can commit the time by living inside of her mind. I can do a date at one o'clock, a date at three o'clock, a date at five o'clock, and then I can fuck my girlfriend. I'm with four women all night. Four women all night. I have turned 12 hours into 48 somehow. Why? Because all they think about is me. The one on a date today, his name was Tristan. He was nice, he took me for coffee, he made me laugh, he made me smile. I could run the same script on all of them. Tell them all the same joke. I'm gonna fuck two or three of them probably of the girls I dated. That's the way to manage your time. Do not waste massive hours, dozens of hours with the same girl. That's never going to get you to the point where I'm at because you only have 24 hours in a day. Other things not to do. Do not sideline important business for women. You need your money. You need your vehicle. You need your agency. You need your presence as a man to have your women. If you start sidelining important business for pussy, you're gonna end up without your important business, which means you end up without your money, which means you end up without your lifestyle. And without your lifestyle, you're gonna end up without your pussy too. So never ever sideline important business for pussy. And don't try to fuck women too fast. Guys get their, you know, the typical dating game of meeting one girl, it's all about when are we finally gonna fuck? It doesn't matter, guys. Build up your collection of women very much. If you've ever worked a sales job, like you build up your sales leads. It's a bunch of maybes and they all come crashing in eventually. And when they all come crashing in, you won't care that the new girl you just met isn't fucking you yet. Because you're getting your dick sucked that night irregardless of her and what she does. However, you can meet her, show her a good time, make her smile, make her laugh, have your nice afternoon, go and get your dick sucked anyway. Doesn't matter if she wants to fuck yet, but she's going to lay in bed thinking, oh, he didn't even try to fuck me. I wonder if he's into me. Do not try to fuck too fast. That's a mistake too many guys make. And it's amateur and it's desperate. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about toys. And when I mean toys, I mean supercars, jacuzzis, jet skis. I don't know what you have. Surfboards. I don't know who you are or what you have. But all of us men have our toys. Now, trying to impress a woman with a supercar doesn't work. If you're trying to impress a 12 year old boy, yeah, it might work. I'm gonna tell you how to handle toys. 
So a Ferrari can make an amazing date, but you don't, a, a jacuzzi can make an amazing date. Uh, I don't know what else you have, a guitar, a surfboard, whatever your talents are, they can add to a date massively if you're talented. I don't have a surfboard or a car. Or, I don't know what type of girl would like that kind of stuff. Quite a few, but I mean, not the girls I typically date. But for example, if you have a Lamborghini like I do, you don't say, oh, you want to go out on my Lamborghini? Talking about money is narcissistic. Talking about money is not attractive when it's one-on-one -on -one with a female. It's not cool. Do your boasting on Instagram. Do your boasting on Twitter. Tell guys you have money. Make them feel bad. You know, but boasting to women is stupid. It's asinine. No woman has a Lamborghini. What are you boasting for? You look like a dickhead. What you just say is, let's go for a drive. I'll tell you what, you, know, you want to come over to my place? Yeah, cool, come over. Make sure you bring a bikini. Then you say, let's get in the jacuzzi. You take it for a drive, then you're in the Lamborghini. All it is is a extra surprise on top of things. Never approach a girl and say, hi, I have a Lamborghini. Uh, would you like to come for a drive with me? Say, you know what, you're really cool. You know, let's go for a drive sometime. Never talk about your assets, never talk about your toys, never say, uh, here, come to my house and I'm going to play the guitar and sing a song for you. That sounds gay. However, if you have your guitar on display in your room and you take her back to your house and she sees your guitar and goes, oh, play me something. Uh, okay, you know what? Cool, I'll play you a little something. Then bust out the guitar. I can't even play guitar, but if you can, that's your game. And the guitar analogy, I don't know what else you want to apply it to, but there's something that you have that they don't. Something you have to impress her, but never mention it. Understate these things. Let them, they already know who you are. They like you enough to meet you. Cool, everything else is a bonus on top. If they're meeting you, you don't have to say, oh, I could play the guitar and I have a, a Ferrari and uh, I have a jet ski at my lake house. But if they want to meet you, hang out with them. First have coffee, then add these things in. They're just bonuses, things that are going to make her smile, things that are going to excite her, and things that are going to lock her in to you even further than she's already invested. Vacations. Do you take a girl on vacation? Why take sand to a beach? People always say. Vacations can be used, but they should never be used on new women. See, in the 1960s, the elite playboys, I don't know, I won't say elite playboys actually. In the 1960s, the womanizers had their fast cars. You had a Mustang, you pick up your girl in your fast car, you drive her around, she'll want to suck your dick. That doesn't work today. Uh, various things in the 1980s, you take her to the luxury casinos, you get all dressed up in your tuxedo, she'd wear her nice dress, you know, take her to the nice parties, drink, buy her champagne, she'd want to have sex with you. Yeah, cool. Today, it has changed. Today, it's flight tickets. Flight tickets and plane tickets will get you in a girl's pants if you're a customer, if you're a dork, if you're a loser. If you're going to go on vacation and bring a woman, cool, take one of your girlfriends, a girl you've been with a while, a girl whose loyalty you've tested, a girl whose loyalty you want to reward. People see me on vacation, and there are some vacation pictures of me in Dubai, and I'm with some beautiful women, and losers, haters will come at me, huh, yeah, you're taking women on vacation, huh, it's the same as hiring escorts. No, 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 no. The women I take on vacation have been my girlfriend for years. They've been my girlfriends through me cheating, through catching me doing all sorts of bad shit, They've been loyal to me. They've been respectful around me and my friends. They've been faithful to me. Yeah, cool. You want to come on vacation? I'm coming. I'll go for two weeks. I'll bring them out for four or five days. Do not use vacations for dating, guys. Do not. You're going to attract the wrong type of woman and you're going to set a precedent with these girls who are going to expect you to take them everywhere. And really, they're just, they, they'd fuck anyone for a plane ticket. Girls who are eager to go on vacations with guys they've never met, you want to stay away from them. So do not use vacations as dates. Vacations are not... Dates, do not use them in your dating game. Use them as rewards for long-term long girlfriends. Obviously, when you're on vacation, all the rules to the game, the Tinder, uh, the Instagram, that all applies. By all means, meet new women when you're there. Leave your girlfriend in your, ho in her, in her, in your hotel room for the night. Go and stay in a different hotel if you get lucky. Cool, but do not, as a rule, go on vacations as dates. Golden rule, don't do that. Text game. Now your text game is very important because after meeting a woman, your text game is what gets her to actually being in a relationship with you or being a girl who shares a bed with you. Text game is intensely important. 
The one mistake guys make that elite level players do not is they text too much. Let me explain to you. It's a very simple mathematical problem. If I spend three or four hours a day talking to a girl on WhatsApp, how many girls can I maintain that level of conversation with? Two, three. I need to be talking to 15 girls at a time. I keep a numerical system. If you've got Andrew's PhD course, my numerical system is explained in there. And I have all my girls filed in my phone. I need to talk to all of them all the time. How do I do it? A few messages a day. Every two hours, I'll open WhatsApp. I'll reply to every single girl. Another two hours passes, I'll reply to every single girl. It's only a couple minutes every two hours. You don't lock yourself down into huge conversations for two reasons. One, the conversation should simply be trying to secure a date, secure a time and a date to go for coffee. And when she's happy, you put it in your calendar and you make sure you text her a few hours before or a day before. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. And you confirm the date before you go. That's all text game is. If you, and I know lots of guys do it, so don't feel bad for making this mistake, are talking on text about her interests, what she likes doing, uh, why are you single, uh, her life story, where any of this shit is date material. You want to be sitting at a dinner table or sitting at a, a coffee bar having that conversation. She's met you. She finds you moderately attractive. At least she gave you her contact details. The whole text game is aiming at closing a date. Hey, how are you? It was good to see you the other night. Continue with your business. A couple hours pass. She's replied. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. It was a really night out. You know, I'd like to see you again and get to know you a bit better. You free tomorrow? Let's go for coffee. Boom. That's it. That's all you need. If you set the precedent, we are talking for hours and hours a day on WhatsApp. You probably do it now. What you're doing is when you do become her boyfriend, when you are in a relationship with her and you start texting her less and less to message your new girls, she's going to think you're ignoring her. However, I'm always the guy who texts five times a day. I'm always the guy who replies five or six replies a day over the course of 24 hours and that's it. That's always been me. I'm not the guy who has huge long conversations all day on WhatsApp and I set that since day one. Now, since day one, that's been the case. Cool, so he's not going to ever expect any more from me. Then our interaction could be the kind of interaction I like. Do you get excited talking to girls on WhatsApp? That's gay. That's lame. That's loser shit. The interaction I want with women, I want them sitting across the table from me, smiling, rubbing my shoulders while we watch a movie, eating popcorn together, in bed, waking up together. That's what I want. I don't want to be talking on WhatsApp all day. So text game, keep it minimal and keep it to the point. However you do it, I, I don't speak, maybe you don't speak English as your first language, maybe you're doing, uh, what, regardless of what your game is and how well your text game uh, comes together, the goal is simple. Make sure it's all orientated to getting her on a date. What kind of food do you like? Perfectly okay question. Oh, I like this, I like that. Oh, you like Japanese food, that's cool. I, I know a really great Japanese restaurant in town. Have you ever been to this? Yeah, it's my favorite restaurant. Okay, I'll take you there tomorrow. Or, no, I've never been there. Oh, you gotta try it. I'll take you there tomorrow. Everything has to be a slow closing process to getting that date. And if she really won't go on a date with you because you're not texting enough, fuck her. There's plenty of girls who will. That's text game summed up. And that is the end of module two. That is everything you need to know about dating to be an elite playboy. But dating isn't the end goal, which is why we have module three. I'm going to talk about relationships. I've covered meeting women and I've covered dating women, but that's not all you want. Now there are guys on Twitter. There are guys on the internet who are like, yeah, women ain't nothing. I just fuck them and leave them. I just hit it and quit it. Nah, you're missing out on something. They're missing out on the fundamental, enjoyable experience of being with women. Women aren't just sex objects. Yeah, that's coming from me one of the baddest playboys in the world. Women are not just sex objects. Women have a special type of energy around them. They're fascinating. They're wonderful in their own special way. I'll never trust a woman like I'll trust a man. If I, if I need backup in a situation or if I have problems, I'm never gonna call a woman. I'll call a man like my brother. However, women are unique and they make life beautiful. You're taking a walk on the beach, it's better with a woman. You're laying in the park looking up at the sky. It's better.
better with a woman. You're at dinner, it's better with a woman. You're at a club with your male friends, you want women around. Women are the seasoning to life. They make it more special. If you're sick, you're in bed, you're not feeling well, you want a woman to look after you. You don't want a man bringing you soup and rubbing your back. That's gay. I mean, maybe you're gay. You wouldn't buy this course if you were, but in which case you would want a man. But women have a special type of energy and I love women. So these hit it and quit it guys, they don't have serious relationships like I do. I have six serious relationships. Why? Because the love and the relationship is maybe the most rewarding part of being an elite playboy, collecting the relationships, not just the notches on the bedpost, but the women who would cry their eyes out if I stopped speaking to them. That is power and that is truly having affinity with women. So now we're gonna go into the details of how to have relationships. First and foremost, in any relationship, you have to establish if she's relationship material. Now there are people who will talk about how to find the right partner for you, how to navigate the sexual marketplace. I see them all the time. I look at their videos and I laugh because these guys have never navigated the sexual marketplace. To be a man who knows what a good apple is and what a bad apple is, you have to try thousands of apples. Every day, taking bites of new apples, knowing what tastes good, knowing what doesn't. This is why I have such wonderful women in my life. Because I have met the psychopaths and the terrible women that men warn you about. I've met the women who would divorce rape me or try to have my baby or upset my life or try to ruin my business. I've met them. I fucked them once. I never talked to them again because I can spot a good one from a bad one from a mile off. So that is the key to having relationships. You have to differentiate which girls you fuck from which girls you wanna stay with. The best way to do this is, as hard as it is, guys, we all think with our dicks sometimes, you have to eliminate beauty in your mind. The hottest girl in the world can be a horrible, backstabbing, money-grabbing, gold-digging bitch, and most dudes will stay with her. Oh, but she's so nice. What exactly is nice about her? Me, when I'm trying to differentiate which kind of women I want to love and which women I want to just sleep with, I usually close my eyes and I think about them as a asexual blackened figurine. I think of what their qualities are. I wake up in the morning, she makes me coffee. My injured shoulder is playing up, she gives me a massage. She leaves her phone around unlocked. Doesn't matter, doesn't care if I look in it never goes out of the room to make to take a phone call, is respectful to my friends, cleans up my house, cooks my meals. If these things are adding up, then I'll usually uh, turn it into something serious. I'll tell her she's exclusively with me. I'll tell her the truth. I'm a busy man. I'll see her as much as I can. I'll tell her that I love her even. I'll tell her I have respect for her. I'll tell her I care about her. All of it's true. Yeah, I have other women. And a lot of them know that. But... Women would rather share the king than marry the jester. And when I say about training yourself to be in that elite level position, whether it be fitness, income, maybe you're the most handsome dude in the world. One of my friends, Alexander Cortez, is the most handsome guy I've ever seen. I'm sure he could have a collection of women if he chose to, if he wanted to live this lifestyle based on looks alone. I don't know what your attributes are, but whatever you, they are, understand that women would rather share a top 1% guy than be with some fat dork who's exclusive to them. Believe me. And fat dorks come with their own set of problems anyway. Now, I meet the type of women all the time who are no good. And I just know that men would fall in love with them because men are weak and men are stupid. You have to be better than most men. To have a collection like mine, you have to be better than most men because the good girls are the ones who are willing to share you. This is what people don't understand. And this is what people don't teach. Like, huh, my wife would uh, never tolerate me talking to other women. Yeah, great. Great, your wife's a bitch. Let me tell you something. I know women who are so invested in my happiness that they know when they're not around, there may be another woman in my bed. I don't know if they know the true extent of it, but they love me so much that they allow me to have other women. When you meet a horrible, nasty, vindictive, jealous bitch, and she's like, oh, well, you better not go out with your friends. You better not do that. Oh, you think that's the woman who really loves you because she wouldn't tolerate you with another woman? No, 
The woman who really loves you is like, look, I know you have another girl, tears streaming down her face, but I really love you. Please don't leave me. Just tell me I'm different from the rest. That's the woman who loves you. So you have to differentiate which girls you fuck and which girls you want to love. Simple as that. A good way of doing this is testing their loyalty. Now, I'm not a obsessive stalker. I'm not a jealous guy. I know my girlfriends don't cheat on me. Sure, do I sleep with some side hoes that may have a boyfriend? I may be their side guy. Do I sleep with side hoes who may do that every weekend? Maybe, maybe. But my girlfriends certainly don't cheat on me. But you have to test their loyalty. Now, don't even look through their phone. Don't even look through their phone. Hey, baby, give me your phone. Unlock it. I want to do something on it. Unlocks, hands it over. Don't do shit. Take a selfie and give it back to her. If she'll hand you her unlocked phone, she ain't cheating. Because believe me, these girls get hundreds and hundreds of messages every day on Instagram, on Facebook. If they're replying in a way that they know you won't like, they will not unlock their phone. So if they won't unlock your phone and hand it to you, then that is a very good loyalty test. She's probably not girlfriend material. By all means, get her to suck your dick, have your fun with her, but she's probably not the girl you want to be with. And I hear a lot about harems, about how to have multiple women. Let me tell you something. I don't enjoy group sex. I don't enjoy threesomes. I don't enjoy foursomes. I don't think they're enjoyable. Sex is a lot more intimate and a lot more fun one-on-one. -on -one. You only have one dick, that's it. So you can only, be, it's taking turns one way or the other. So I don't enjoy group, se group sex. So my harem game is different um, than a lot of guys. Now on the internet, there are very few people who have multiple women. Uh, I know one, I'm not going to name him and shame him in my course, but he's a Muslim guy, black guy, American, lives in Germany, a uh, very smart guy. He legitimately has a harem. He has multiple wives. Uh, respect, respect to him, and he's a good friend of mine. Almost no one you see talk about having multiple women has multiple women, besides my brother and myself. Now, how do I run my harem game? It's different than most people. You see, women behave better, and take this from an elite level guy, Women behave better when they know you have other options. If you have one girl, one girl only, she'll try to stop you talking to other women, stop you meeting other women, and she'll aggressively try to interject in your life. But when you have other women and she knows that you have other women, maybe she turns a blind eye, maybe she doesn't want to hear about it, but she knows. Maybe she's seen you tagged on your Instagram with them. Maybe she's seen them in the background of your Instagram story. When she knows you have other women, women up their game. I'm telling you the truth. Good women don't leave. They try to make you happier. Now, when you have a harem all living together, I've lived with two or three women maximum at any, any one point. Very unpleasant experience. Uh, because sleeping arrangements were always difficult. Sex, I didn't enjoy that much because there was always too many girls. However, the women behaved very well. One woman didn't want to be the one who fucks up out of three because she knows that she's sleeping on the couch and you're fucking those two that night. It was always a game of one-upmanship. The women try to up their game to out-compete one another. Now, my harem game is very similar to this. However, the women are never in the same place at the same time. They know each other's names. They know who they are. They know that these girls are around me. Even one of my girlfriends isn't quite sure if I'm sleeping with these women, but she heavily suspects that I am. And she checks her, their stories all the time. She knows they're at my house. And that does not make her flip out and cause arguments because she knows she'll get blocked. And she knows when she's blocked, I'm going to be around these other women. It makes her up her game. So my women are not in the same place but they're fully aware of each other's presence. They're fully aware that the other ones exist and they up their behavior and they check themselves so I don't have to check them and end up with these other women. So my harem game is, is what I call distance game. They're, they're far away from each other, but they know each other exists and that's what makes them behave. I'm going to be honest with you. This is a refreshing moment of honesty. It is hard to have six girlfriends. I have six. I didn't know the exact number I had until I started filming this course. I had to actually count. I didn't know. I thought it was five, six, seven. It could have been one of those numbers. It's difficult because time management is a problem. Luckily for me, I live a lifestyle and you need to set your lifestyle up in the same way where you are busy all hours of the day, but no hours of the day. I can be busy anytime I like. I have a very busy, hectic work schedule, which is usually my excuse. 
but you do have to see your girlfriends. Now, I'll take a girlfriend on a date, I'll date a new girl, and I'll see a second girlfriend in the evening. I'll usually wake up with that girlfriend, Uber in a girl for lunch, and see another girlfriend that, the second evening. I see my girls about two times a week, maybe three times a week each. But instead of having one relationship, you can have six relationships where the girl thinks you're a busier man than you are. It is possible, but you have to manage your time very, very closely, which makes meeting new girls difficult. Now, whatever you do when you're in a relationship, never ever concede to having enough women. Never think, you know what, I've got my three girlfriends, that's wonderful. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna delete Tinder, I'm gonna stop posting on Instagram, I'm gonna stop going to clubs, I'm gonna stop doing my approaches. I've got three girlfriends that are all smoking hot. You know why? Because I've lived it. I've been in that situation and I've been content. One girl has an argument with another girl, they find out about each other, they both break up with you, maybe you only get one back, boom, you're down to two. Same thing happens again, boom, you're down to one. Shit, suddenly you're the guy who's happily married, you've got one gina, you're stuck there with one chick. Now you've done no legwork, you've put in zero hours in terms of getting new women, so you have to start from scratch, build up your collection again. It's months before you have three again, then four, then five, then six. Never ever be content. But in relationships, it's very important to be kind. People think players, especially guys who worked in the industry that I have, are horrible people, that I'm rude to women, that my house is a revolving door with women in that. Okay, that bit is a bit true. But it, you think they leave unhappy? No, they do not. Be polite, buy them flowers sometimes, buy them chocolates. You don't have to go out of your way to make a woman smile. I stop at the gas station all the time. Look at my cars. Every time I stop at the gas station, I buy a box of chocolates. It's the thought that will make a woman's day. If you have lunch with a woman and you've bought her a teddy bear and a bouquet of flowers, girlfriends only, obviously, she'll go home in the evening and she won't think about what I'm doing, who my dick's in. She's like, oh, Tristan loves me. He bought me flowers and a teddy bear. And she'll be posting photos to her Instagram of the flower and the teddy bears I bought her, which makes my other girls see. They suspect that I bought them. They up their game. Hey, Tristan, when am I seeing you? It's a beautiful system, but be nice to your girlfriends in your relationships. But being nice also includes not engaging in bullshit arguments. If a girl wants to argue with you all the time, she's not a girl that's cohesive with the elite player lifestyle. You need to stay away from those women. Engaging in needless arguments is a tactic women use. They're smarter than you think to eat away the hours of your day and the hours of time you could be using to pursue other women. I recently had to let a girlfriend of mine go. Beautiful. I'm not gonna show her a picture here. She's long gone. I don't reminisce over old news. However, absolutely stunning. But every moment I wasn't with her, you're with other girls, blah, 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 starting arguments with me, complaining, moaning. I was engaging on WhatsApp for a, an extra 30, 40 minutes a day that I didn't have. Stay away from women who make arguments. So be nice, be kind, but don't take shit. If they want to start arguments, stop talking to them. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So if they're arguing with you and you have no nice response to them, cut them off. Do not invest hours in that shit. In relationships, a good way to keep your relationship fresh and a good way to keep your relationship happy is to make demands of women. Women love to serve men. They really do. If a woman cooks you a meal and it's good, she's going to be happy. She can spend an hour in the kitchen, sweating, toiling, she can burn her hand. If she brings you a plate of food and you eat it and you're satisfied, she is happy. Believe me, women are servile. Good women are servile. And a good way to keep your relationship happy is to make demands of your women. I have a ritual. Every morning I drink a black coffee in bed. I never make it myself. Whichever girl I wake up next to goes downstairs, makes my coffee, she knows how I like it, she brings it upstairs, I sip it. Now I don't just sip it, I'll add something in. You know, I love when you make me coffee. Your coffee's the best, because I can tell it's made with love. It's a joke, we'll laugh, it's cheesy, it's corny, but that will set the mood for the day. That will set the pace for the day. It's a wonderful thing. Women are very servile creatures, so do not be afraid to make demands of them. So if you hang around me, or you know people who have hung around me, you'll know how it goes. I'm sitting with the boys, I'm drinking some whiskeys. Hey baby, uh, Bobby wants a refill. 
hey, Iggy wants another few ice cubes, uh, darling. Uh, excuse me, uh, Jonathan's beer is out and you're, you're in the house. Like, I mean, get, get him a lighter as well. His cigar's out. Come on. They love it. They really do. If you have a good woman. So that is certainly an important part of having a relationship. Make demands. Be the man. Be assertive. Be alpha. Be dominant. It helps. When you're maintaining relationships like I am and your time is limited, you have to be sure not to burn your time. I call it burning time. You're with your girlfriend for three hours. All you have is three hours. Netflix? No! Not fucking Netflix. Why would you sit there and burn three hours away on Netflix? You have other girls to see and other things to do. Now, admission. I am a guy. I fuck every day. I do not masturbate. I do not watch porn. Elite level playboys do not do these things because you can't. So I'm going to have sex with three different women a day and I still need to jerk off. No, I'm fine. I haven't jerked off in a year and a half. Yeah, I was in India last time because there were no girls around. I remember the exact fucking date. So I'm telling you, porn, masturbation, throw them out the window. You want to be an elite level playboy? Be a fucking man. You don't get sex for one day? Cool, you'll live. Do 50 press-ups before you go to sleep. Go out the next day hungrier. I'm going to tell you, women need sex just like men do. Now, it's very easy for me, if I wanted to, to not have sex with my women for a week, two weeks, for an individual girl. Because say I only see her three times in a week and it's all during the afternoon. I've already had sex that morning. I know I have another girl to see in the evening. It's easy for me to just spend time, burn the hours watching Netflix, but she will not be as happy. Guys, Tiger Woods isn't the best golf player in the world because he sits on his couch watching Netflix. Floyd Mo Muhammad Ali was not the best heavyweight boxer of all time because he sat on his couch watching TV. You want to be an elite level playboy, you want to collect these women, then you have to keep them happy. You know what? It's the middle of the afternoon. I've already had sex three hours ago or four hours ago. A girl sucked my dick because I woke up in the morning. Ah, my girlfriend's over. You know what? Grab her by the fucking tits till your dick gets hard and make sure you fuck her. Make sure you do. There is no maintaining a relationship without sex. Maintaining a healthy relationship and never having sex with your woman is not real. Doesn't matter who she is, doesn't matter how loyal she is. If she's really loyal, she'll bring it up to you. Uh, why aren't we having sex? Oh, you never want to have sex with me. And she'll get mad. If she's disloyal, she'll seem fine and she'll, she's fucking someone else. If you're going to collect these women, they're not cars. You can't park them all on your driveway for months and sit there triumphantly and say, ah, look at my collection of cars. Aren't they beautiful? You've got to drive them. If you don't drive them, they'll disappear. Someone else will take them off your driveway. That's the way women are. So you absolutely have to keep your woman happy. Man up. I'm not going to tell you how to fuck your girl. You know how to fuck your girl. I'm not going to go into sex tactics. That's not what this course is about. But if you have multiple women, make sure you fuck them. You got to keep them happy. What women really crave is attention. They love the attention because they love feeling in demand. They love feeling desired. Now, if you hang out with a girl three times in a week and you don't fuck her once, now you can brag to your friends, yeah, I was tired, I fucked too many other girls. That's cool, but she doesn't feel desired and she's going to be unfulfilled in your relationship. When your hours are scarce, you have to invest your hours doing things that make her feel wanted. Take some pictures together. Say, you know what, baby, here, to get in your underwear, I'm gonna take some photos of you. Take some photos of her. What do you do with them? Nothing. Make her feel special, then get your dick out. Make sure you fuck it right. There's no excuse for women leaving you. Even if you have six or seven, I have more girlfriends and less time than most guys who get dumped. And I don't get dumped. Why? Because even when I'm not in the mood, I man up and I understand what I have to do to keep my women happy. I'm often not in the mood, often I've been training, often I've been fucking other women, but you gotta get it done. Now I've covered how to maintain a healthy relationship when you have multiple girls, but I'm gonna touch on what not to do. The basics of what not to do, never admit that you're wrong for doing something that you wanted to do. I'll give you an example. Another girl sucks your dick. Another girl, you fuck her. Your girlfriend finds out. Two of your girlfriends, girlfriends find out. Don't even say sorry. You, you're not sorry, one. Why are you not sorry? Because you wanted to do it at the time. So you're sorry you got caught. You're not really sorry and she knows it. You know, you have to hold the line. The moment you start apologizing, you're making a concession. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry means I shouldn't have done it. It means I won't do it again. 
Many things are implied by your sorry. I never engage in this kind of behavior. This girl was at your house, this girl was at your house. Hey, the fuck? Haven't you got a life? Stay off Instagram. Why are you watching this girl's story for anyway? It's really embarrassing. What, you're going to stalk everyone who comes into my house? Don't look through my phone. Why are you looking through my phone? Now, you, you know what? I was having a really nice day with you, and now we're arguing because you wanted to look through my phone. This is so stupid. How old are you? 16? You're obsessed with, with, with social media. Quit fucking looking at Instagram. Never admit you're wrong. Hold the line. Say whatever it is you can, but never concede and never admit mistakes because they're not mistakes. You are on your way to being an elite level playboy. I am an elite level player. I don't make mistakes. I fuck them because I want to fuck them. It isn't a mistake. No, I'm not sorry. Now, this isn't an act. I mean it. I don't apologize and I fucking mean it. I'm really not sorry. So, Jesus, they can't break me down. They can't squeeze an apology out of me because I really, really mean it when I say that I'm not sorry. Never concede. In a relationship, another thing not to do I've covered this basically, but do not engage in pointless arguments and do not engage in pointless conversation. Um, if you have a relationship, if you're going to get caught cheating, don't let it be with some girl who lives in California that you're flirting with online for no reason. It makes you look like a simp, makes you look like a fan, makes you look like a customer, makes you look like a nerd. If you're going to get caught, get caught fucking something. Do not burn your hours cheating on your girlfriend emotionally with girls far away, with girls you haven't got a chance with, with girls with boyfriends who don't take you seriously, don't waste your time with this stuff, man. You only have 24 hours in the day and you need to see three or four women, minimum, if you want to operate on my level. So do not waste your time with girls that are far away because there's nothing worse than getting caught and having your girlfriend all strung up on some nonsense with some girl who's hotter than her, but she's in Singapore anyway. What are you doing? So absolutely do not do that. One of the most fundamental mistakes. When you get attention like I do as a man, make sure it's localized. Make sure you have an opportunity to fuck her, an opportunity to see her, and don't get caught by your girlfriend doing nonsense shit. Don't get caught watching porn. It makes women feel undesirable. Cut porn out of your life if you want to operate on my level. Do not get caught masturbating. That's super embarrassing. These are very basic things, but I think if you, if you are on your way to being an elite level guy, you should know these things already. Those are the don'ts in relationships. No elite playboy lives without girlfriends or the respect of women. Relationships are essentially important to every single man. It's not enough to just have sex. Relationships are intensely important. So use everything I taught you and maintain your relationships the way that I do it. Believe me, some of these things may not seem like they work. Test them and hit me back with some feedback because I know from personal experience they do. That's the end of module three. Now, there's a part to this no one wants to hear. Everyone, uh, most guys are looking for a quick fix. You're looking for a secret, something I'm gonna tell you, a magic word, a spell, an incantation that's gonna make you be surrounded with women who wanna have sex with you all the time. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. It's a recipe. It's a recipe which includes lots of hard work. And this is, be, this, is a, this is something I call being a man in demand. Or the five F's. I've got five F's. They are fitness, finance, fun, free time, and fucking. Those are the five F's. And that is the recipe of what makes you a man who women want to fuck. If you're not a man who women want to fuck, if you are lazy and you're broke, and your Instagram looks terrible, and you're fat as fuck, and you look like shit, and you're not smart, you're not interesting, you're not funny, you're busy all the time, how many women do you think you're gonna get? Zero. It doesn't matter what you apply of what I know. You have to be a man who has some level of demand about him to be an elite level playboy. So we're gonna take these five Fs in a row. The first one, fitness. Now I don't mean just physical fitness, but how well do you look? Women care about looks, they do. I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I try my hardest. Right now as we film, April the 11th, I'm in quarantine. My beard isn't trimmed, my hair isn't cut nicely, but most of the time I'm walking around with a nice trimmed razored beard. My haircut is always on point, I've gelled my hair, I've dressed nicely. I'm wearing a designer shirt, nice watch, nice shoes. I'm presentable to the world. I work out. I'm physically fit. 
Uh, I'm always, I'm not always in the best shape, but you know, I do my push-ups every morning. I do my boxing. I do my training. Whatever training you do, you have to do it. Fitness is important. How fit do you look? It is basic human evolutionary biology. Oh, look, this big, strong, handsome guy. He'll give me nice children. Women may not think that exactly in their heads, but it's a big part of what makes women want to have sex with you. If you disregard it, if you think, oh, well, I'm rich. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm a big, fat, ugly fuck. I've got loads of money. Women will want to fuck me. They won't. They won't. They may fuck you if you pay them, but that isn't what this is about. That's not being a playboy. That's being a customer. And I'm not teaching you how to be a customer. So yes, you do have to be presentable. You have to look your best. Train as much as you can. Make sure your hair is the way that you like it. I don't know. Don't get your hair cut if you have long hair, whatever. Do whatever makes you look good. Fitness is essential because it's something that women desire. And there are general rules to women. No woman on earth thinks, ah, I love big, fat, ugly guys. I mean, there are guys who like fat chicks, maybe. No woman on earth wants a big, fat, ugly dude who gets out of breath when he walks up the stairs. Not a single one. So you take that general rule and you think, okay, I want to be as attractive as I can to as many women as possible. Don't be a fat, lazy fuck. Rule number one, if you're a fat, lazy fuck, get to the gym. You're not going to be able to live like me until you do. Get into reasonable shape, at least. Being the fat, lazy fuck is not attractive to women. Fitness is essential. Now, with these general rules, when I say women don't like guys who are big, fat, and ugly, you can take everything else I say in the five Fs and apply them exactly the same way. I am not every woman's type. A lot of women look at me and think, you know what? I don't like him. I don't like the way he looks. Don't like the way he's shaped. Don't like his height. I'm too tall, maybe, for some women. Yeah, if they're short. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like that. Cool. I'm not every woman's type. Neither are you. Nobody is. I know some handsome dudes are not every woman's type. They can't be. However, being fit makes it far more likely that you are going to be the type of the women you meet. So absolutely, this is an essential rule. The first of the five Fs. Being a man in demand is fitness. Look your best, train hard. Women like to feel safe. They like to feel protected. They like when you put your big arms around them. They like if you can pick them up. Women love that shit. Get to the gym. Now, some people have further to go than others. Yes, some people are genetically blessed. If this is you, you may work out once a week and have an iron six pack. I don't have a six pack right now. That may be you. Cool, lucky you. You may work out five times a week and still look like shit, then you simply have to try harder than the other guys. Being a top 1% guy, everyone's born with different attributes. You're born smarter, okay, it's easier to get rich. You're born with better genetics, okay, it's easier to get fit. You're born, you're born uh, wittier. You're, you're raised in a, in a better environment, okay, it's better to be funny and, and, and make them laugh. Everyone has advantages and disadvantages, but you need to maximize all of these as much as you can. As much as you can, regardless of who you are. And some have further to go than others. But if you're not taking into account your fitness at all, you're not going to get the girls that I get. Number two, finance. Finance is important. Finance gives you the ability to do things. If all of the hottest women were in a building and it cost $500 to go inside that building to have drinks, and you only had $100 to your name, you're not gonna meet any beautiful women. That's the way the world is. It sounds like such a crazy example, but the world works that way. All of the most beautiful women in the world, with very few exceptions, are in high-end, luxurious places. They attract women, and if you're not there, you're not going to meet them. Finance is very important. You do not give women money, ever. You do not give them money for sex. You do not give them money to show off. You don't give women money, that's bullshit. However, your financial situation creates an aura of fun. Women love fun. I have a swimming pool in my house. Women love that. In the summer, they're coming here, jumping in the pool, taking their bikinis off. Now, are they thinking, ah, this pool, 28,000 euros this cost. Oh, this pool costs so much money. Tristan has money. Wonderful. No. They're thinking, wow, swimming pool. That's it. Finance and your financial situation makes you fun. Now, 
This is something else that you are not going to hear anywhere else but this course. Investing. Investing, you say? Investing your money to get women? That doesn't make any sense. You don't understand. You can invest in a city. You can invest in a club, in a bar. You can invest in your location. That doesn't mean buy shares. I'm talking about wasting your money. I call wasting my money investing. Why? I was once asked what the best investment I ever made was. I looked straight at my cousin. I said, you know what? One of the best investments I ever made was blowing hundreds of thousands of dollars right here in Bucharest. Champagne shows for drinks I don't drink. Getting all the sparklers come over, my name put up on the wall. Tipping really heavily in restaurants. Ordering lobster and champagne when I go out. Being out in clubs and bars all the time. Buying coffees all the time. Being cheap isn't cool. Now me throwing all this money around, I am the man that everybody knows. When I go into the club, everything is made possible for me. I, no smoking allowed. Have you ever seen a picture of me in a club without a cigar in my mouth? I have special privileges, special rights. Everyone treats me with respect. If I'm with a girl, the security shake my hand. The manager comes over with a free bottle of champagne every time I go anywhere because I've invested in becoming a somebody in this city. Nobody will give you this advice. The advice you read on the internet, be cheap, save three pounds 50 and don't buy that coffee. Make a coffee at home. No, don't make a coffee at home. Go to a cool cafe and drink their fancy coffees every day. Tip the waiter heavily. Then you're that guy. You go there and they're on a date. Tristan, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you again, Mr. Tate. Has someone parked your car for you nicely? Investing in your city is important. And it's what most people will call wasting money. What does wasting money even mean? What is money for? You can't hold on to money. You never really even own money, even if you have it in your pocket. Money is just to be interchanged with other people. You got it because you sold something they want. You want good service, you throw it to someone else. You're just passing it around. Don't waste all your money, obviously, but you live in Atlanta, Georgia. I was in Atlanta, and there's a cigar bar where they would recognize me right now if I went there. Same in uh, Hollywood, in California. There's a cigar lounge where they'd recognize me right now. Because I went there for two weeks, I was there four or five times, bought the most expensive cigars, tipped heavily, ordered some nice drinks. They know me today. So there are a few parts in the world, uh, Moscow, Slovakia, some parts in the United States, certainly, where I would be no Stockholm now, where I'd be known on a first name basis if I walked into the establishment. But within my city, yes, I am a celebrity. I mean, I'm in the newspapers all the time. I'm actually a celebrity here. But again, that stems from my initial investment. The club owners knowing me, the barmen knowing me, everyone knowing who I was. Before the newspapers got a sniff of who was this Tristan Tate, I'd invested. So finance is important. Blow your money in the city you're in. You want to be a somebody? It's not free. You make good money, great, good for you. There are millionaires on Twitter, who people who claim to be millionaires, who also talk about, oh, save all your money, don't spend it. Yeah, cool, that's all right. Yeah, you want, you, want, you want no one to know who you are and have a big number in your bank account? Yeah, that's cool. I invest my money by blowing it in my city. It was the best investment I ever made. I'm one of the most famous faces in this city. I walk down the street, I, I get asked for photos all the time. Girls know who I am. I get hit up on Instagram by random females. Yeah, you want to be a playboy? Throw some money around. Finance is the second of the five Fs, exceptionally important. Number three, fun. You have to be entertaining. Now, there are ways that nerds think you can be entertaining that don't work. Having a Lamborghini, for example. Having a Lamborghini does not make women want to have sex with you. It makes little boys want to drive around in your car. Women don't give a shit about driving around in your Lamborghini that much. Unless they like you, you have to make it fun. Having a supercar gets you an opening conversation. You park at the club, you walk inside. Is that your car? If you reply, yeah, that's my car. Uh, it has 600 horsepower and uh, I got the tires custom from, from Germany. And, and the body kit is actually from a, a custom body shop in Bucharest. And I changed the color and uh, I've got a special steering wheel. The girl's going to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, cool, see you later. If you're a boring twat, it doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter what car you drive. Hi, is that your car? No, it's yours. 
I'm gonna get drunk tonight, you're driving me home, yeah? Cool, obviously you don't really let her drive your car. But say something funny, I just came off, uh, up with that off the top of my head. Say something witty, say something entertaining. Being a millionaire, having nice things, having cool things, it doesn't get you pussy, it gets you a five second opener. And if you squander that, if you waste it, it was all for nothing. You have to be fun. Women don't care about money. They care about what's entertaining. Now, when I was broke, I used to have no money. I would be funny, I'd take girls on a date, I'd say, uh, oh, you didn't wear high heels on our date in my Volkswagen Golf. They'd be like, ah, oh, no, where are we even going? Well, you know what? You're not wearing high heels. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you to somewhere suitable. Brr, McDonald's. This was my routine. I go to McDonald's. I add a few pounds to my name. I roll on the window. Hi, I need an ice cream McFlurry. Yeah, bring me an ice cream McFlurry, but put extra love in it. What? What? You, what did you say? Extra love. Extra toppings? No, no, no. Extra love. I'm on a date. I need to make her fall in love with me. Oh, uh, okay. The girl's laughing her ass off. She thinks it's hilarious. I give her her ice cream. Oh, uh, is it working? Are you in love with me yet? Why'd you take me to McDonald's? Well, you weren't wearing high shoes. Ha ha ha. I didn't have any money. Make them laugh. Make them enjoy their time with you. And this is what I said about dating earlier. You have to implant yourselves in their mind. Wow, I had a wonderful time. That could be on her mind for two days while you're fucking your girlfriends and you're fucking other women. That could be on her mind all week. While she's working, maybe she's busy and she can't wait to see you again. You have to be fun. Fun is important. Now, this is very subjective. It varies from man to man. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you live. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you know. I don't know who you know. But you know, kill the mosquito. See? Boom. I'm a ninja. But you know how to have fun in your own city, I'm sure, or your own town. You know how to show a girl a good time. Don't be boring. Yeah, that is essential. And if you're a boring guy, work on it. If you're broke, work on it. If you're unfit, work on it. Those are the first three of the five F's. Free time. Free time is essential. It kind of links to finance because what money buys you is free time. You need to have free time. I was watching a dork who was a former Goldman Sachs trader, who's saying, yeah, well, I used to go to bed at midnight, wake up at four in the morning, and I had one girlfriend, and one day she left me. She got up in the middle of the night at four when I woke up and started screaming at me, saying, are you kidding? You're never home. Okay, you're a Goldman Sachs trader. Maybe you're a Goldman Sachs trader. I don't know what you do, but you're working 70, 80 hours a week. Find a better way. If you really want to be an elite level playboy, you need to be working 40 hours a week max. 45 at the very, very upper limit. You can't do it any other way. All of my women, all of my girlfriends, all the sex that I have, all the dates that I go on, there's no 70 hour week where I can accommodate that. I'd have to cut my women, I'd have to cut them in half, literally. So yeah, free time is essential. It really is essential and you need to be flexible with your time as well. The flexibility of time is just important as your free time because if a woman says, oh, well, there's this place I wanna go or there's this lunch event at this restaurant or I, you know, I wanna go to a swimming pool or in the middle of the day when most dudes are at their nine to five, you need to be like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, let's go, I'm gonna come pick you up. It sets you aside for most men. Being available whenever you want, the flexibility is very important as well. Most guys work nine to fives. At one o'clock in the afternoon, you know I'm gonna take you out for a spin. Let's go for a drive, let's go for a coffee. Being free at those hours when no one else is free is important. So yeah, you absolutely have to maximize your income, but minimize your hours worked. That's super important. If you're working a, a wage job, where you're getting paid per hour, no shame in it, brothers. I used to do the same thing. But a way to get women, don't start working more hours. No, cut your workload in half. Do budget dates. You'll get more women than if you up your work hours, trust me. Free time immensely important. Number five, the F word, fucking. You have to fuck your women right. Not just for them. I've covered about how it keeps relationships together, but fuck relationships. I'm talking about bitches, sluts, girls who are at your table, one night stands. Put the work in. I'm not gonna tell you how to fuck. I'm not gonna tell you how to please a woman if you don't know then you're never gonna be an elite playboy. You never will be if you can't fuck. But when you do it right, it gets you more women. It really does. Women talk about this shit on a scale you have no idea. 
Believe me, if you fuck a girl, ignore your girlfriends. You don't, you don't want to be messing around with your girlfriend's friends anyway. But let's say you meet a girl for one night. You don't see her for four weeks. Oh, her friend's now following me on Instagram. Why is that? Because this bitch has been talking about, yeah, I met this guy, Tristan. Yeah, he took me for a drink. It's a bit of an asshole. Oh, my God, he fucked me so good. Yeah, he fucked me so good. Oh, I can't be mad at him. I'd like to see him again, actually, but he's not really texting me. Boom! Her friend hears you. Her friend's on it. Sex is immensely important. That is the most important one of the five Fs. Because if you have everything else on point and you fuck your girl and you only last 30 seconds and then you fall asleep, you're a joke. You're never going to secure her into a relationship. You're never going to get the love. You're never going to get the respect. And you're never going to have the reputation that leads to residual women coming in. Those are the five Fs. Remember, fitness, finance, fun, free time, fucking. You cannot neglect any one of these if you wish to be an elite. You want to be a guy with one girlfriend, maybe two. You want to have sex once a month, maybe twice. Cool. Neglect as many as you like. You can't live like me if you neglect these things. And there we have it. Short and sweet. Module four, the five Fs. Immensely important stuff. You have to put the work in. This is the most important part of the course. Do not neglect module four. Do not neglect the five Fs. If you do, you're going to be very lonely and you're never going to pull it off.